Hi there. I'm Ray Glasser, and this is the Cleveland Tech Report. You know, home video has just recently celebrated its 10th birthday. That's right. Home video, as we know it, is now just over 10 years old. And I thought it might be fun to kind of look back 10 years ago and see what was on the market in the way of VCRs. Now, if you were shopping for a VCR in the latter part of 1975, what could you get? Well, back then, there was only one type of machine, one format, in other words, one brand, and one price. And the whole package is right over here. Yes, there it is. This was the first Sony Betamax, which was uh, brought to this country in about September of 1975 for a whopping $2,495. Yes, over $2,000 for a one-hour Betamax. But that's all there was back in 1975, and what happened to that is kind of uh, explanatory as to why we have the machines that we have here in the mid-1980s. So anyway, I thought it might be interesting to kind of look back at this machine in detail, see what kind of features it had for that whopping price, and uh, see what the person could do who bought the VCR in 1975. So let's now take a close-up look at the first Sony Betamax, the LV1901 console. Okay, here we go. Let's begin with a kind of a long shot to show you the whole unit as it stands. You know, besides being a functional 19-inch color TV and a one-hour Betamax, this whole thing is actually a beautiful piece of furniture as it sits in your room. And I was very, very lucky to get a hold of this thing for a very decent price. Anyway, what we have is uh, obviously a 19-inch Sony Trinitron color TV and over here a whole host, host of tuning and channel controls and timer and all that good stuff. Up here is the world's first one-hour Sony Betamax. Down here is actually a door that you can put in tapes or microphones or whatever you want. And over here are, I think, two 6x4 speakers. Now let's go in a little bit closer. Okay, we are now at the tuning compartment, as it were. And I have to admit, for something that's this old, uh, I think Sony thought this thing out very, very cleverly. Here we go. Over here we have your standard TV tuners for UHF and VHF, the old clunker type of tuners that were prevalent on TVs back in 1975. Next to them, which you can barely see, we have volume, which of course is volume control, and picture control, which uh, on Sony TV sets is the contrast control. Now here is the clever part, I think. Sony has given you a second TV tuner right behind this glass so you can actually record one channel while you're watching another at the same time. Okay, This tuner is activated by pushing the AUX button right there for auxiliary and of course it even has its own AFT on or off right over there. So you can actually be recording say channel 3 over here while you're watching channel 4 over here at the exact same time. Now, what if you're recording channel 3 here and you want to watch it as you record? Guess what MON stands for? How about monitor? Push this button, which is kind of tricky. The light comes on, supposedly, <laughs> and you can actually watch channel 3 as you're recording it over here. Very, very clever. Alright. Down here we have PB and record. This is playback and record. Right now the green light's on, so we are in the playback position on the Betamax. Over here is your source control, whether you want to record off TV or camera, because you could buy an optional black and white camera for this unit. Over here is the clock, and what kind of clocks were prevalent back in 1975? Well, they hadn't invented the quartz digital clocks yet, so what we had back then was a simple leaf clock, and this one does work. You actually have a clock here and a timer setting right over here. You can actually set the time 24 hours in advance to time and record a one hour show. Over here we have a button for TV power on. Over here is the uh, VTR power, power on and timer button. Over here is another door. Behind this are merely six buttons 
which are your standard TV control buttons. Vertical hold, sharpness, tone control, uh, and you can't see it too well, but on the top there, brightness, there we are, brightness, color, and hue. Auto on or off is the usual factory setting as to how they think the brightness and color should be. And of course the AFT is auto fine tuning, so your uh, channels won't drift, which is again actually a thing of the past. So with all the doors opened up, this is the tuning and timer compartment, which is actually the most complex and confusing part of this whole thing. But it's actually not that bad compared to today's machines with 8 event, 14 day programming and beta hi-fi and VHS hi-fi stereo sound and all that. You merely have a regular TV tuner, your main tuner, auxiliary tuner, which does not get used unless you want to record one channel while you're watching another channel, standard TV picture controls, your clock timer, and your power buttons. That's really about it. Bear in mind this was a very, very simple VCR. You only recorded one event within 24 hours. And now let's take a look at that first Sony Betamax. By the way, in case you might be wondering what kind of tapes did this first Betamax use, well, there was only two links, the K30 and the K60, 30 minutes and 60 minutes. Now when you could find these at your local department store, the K60 retailed for $16.95, and that was for only 60 minutes now, and the K30 went for only $12.95 for 30 minutes. Now for a look at the first Betamax. It's actually contained underneath this very nice smoked plastic cover, which uh, tilts up to keep, of course, the dust out. Uh, this is very much like the first two or three Betamaxes, actually, but of course it lacks a built-in TV tuner. So what you have is, uh, hey, the, the typical Sony Betamax, at least uh, the way it was back in 1975. Now, if I can get this light down a little bit, there we go. So everything is not washed out. You can actually see some of the things on here. There's a power light, which actually should be green. It's coming out blue on tape. Tracking knob. There's two lights for standby, which is activated when the tape is threading. And, of course, the red record light. Whoop. Right there. All right. Here are the function buttons, just like an audio cassette. Notice they're not marked, except for the eject and the record. They have just arrows on them, and they're also ribbed right there. This is the only Betamax that I know of that actually had buttons like this that were ribbed. But you have the standard operating modes, eject, rewind, stop, play, fast forward, and, of course, record. And many people have asked over the years, what is this blank space for right here next to the record button? Well, from what I've learned uh, throughout the years, this was originally for audio dub, but I guess Sony figured nobody would use it, so why put it on there? But this was for audio dub. Um, over here we have the old three-digit tape counter, which you can't see too well because of the angle that I'm at. Uh, so you have a tape counter and, of course, a memory for the 000 reset. And that is it, friends. That's all we had on the first Betamax. And there it is. Mine works. I'm very happy about that fact. Uh, it took some money, of course, but this thing does work. Play it, so to play a tape, push the tape down, you push the play button, and a couple of seconds later, you do get a picture. There it is. Okay, so we've shown you now what this Betamax is and what it can do. Let's now look at how to use it. Right now we're watching TV off the air. We're watching Cleveland's own Channel 8, which we're picking up, of course, right over here. Volume control, and uh, so forth and so on. Now, let's do, make a recording. First thing, VTR power on. Open the lid. Push the eject in the Betamax. Put a tape in. Okay, let's make a recording. Play and record, both go down. We are now taping that channel right there. Let's wait a couple of seconds and uh, see how our tape looks. You might wonder and you might well ask, how's the quality of the Sony TV? How's the quality of the recording? Excellent in both cases. Here's our playback of the recording that we just made. And there it is. This, of course, is standard Beta X1, the old speed 
which is now mostly used in the industrial market. All right, now, what if you want to record a different channel other than this one? Auxiliary tuner right here. Open the hatch, push AUX, we're on uh, Cleveland's channel five. To make sure, push the monitor button, which didn't work too good before. There it is. Start the recording, which I'm sorry, it's kind of whited out here because this requires a lot of light. Okay, we're now recording channel five, but we are actually watching channel eight at the same time. Let's see what happens. We're watching a vampire movie right now, but we are recording channel five, which is right now running a commercial. Well, let's see what happens. Rewind our tape back to zero, put it in play, and let's see what's going on. Just try to find a better battery there we are. There's the commercial. And there we go. Back to channel eight. You want to see channel five? Doesn't work until you put the thing in record. Push monitor, and there's channel five. This holiday seat, TJ Maxx, you'll find women's. And there's channel eight. Now, to make a timer recording, all you do is set your uh, clock timer over here, push the timer button, and push the record button and play button down. When your preset time does turn over on this clock, this will be activated with the power on and you'll be recording either this or this channel depending if you have this AUX switch pushed. Sony was the first company to venture into home video seriously. Some companies had done it uh, in the early 1970s with of course no success. But anyway, Sony figured that many people would spend lots and lots of money to invest in huge videotape libraries of sports events, uh, TV shows, network specials, what have you which of course just didn't happen except for a couple of cases. Uh, I myself have a library of pretty close to a thousand tapes which has taken over ten years to get. Uh, Kerry Decker of course has a couple hundred tapes himself which he's been doing since 1976 or 77 as well. But many of us back then that had the first Betamaxes did in fact save a lot of our tapes. We didn't erase them and we did uh, collect tapes, uh, TV shows, and movies, what have you and we tried to build libraries uh, whether it be for our own enjoyment whether it be for trading purposes back then, because keep in mind that in the mid-1970s there were no video rental stores. You couldn't go up to the corner and to your local video store and rent a movie for the weekend. The stores just were not there until the early 1980s. Well anyway, Sony back then was the only company in the home video until about 1977 when JVC began the VHS format and the rest as they say is history. Well. It goes without saying that Sony did not sell many of these monsters here. At $24.95, it was just kind of too much for the average person to handle unless you were either very wealthy or you were one of the many novelty freaks that were around back then. So about six months later, Sony brought out more or less a stripped down version of the Betamax. They took the deck out of here, added its own tuner, and the SL7200 was born. Here is the same Betamax deck with an optional clock which cost you $60 back then and of course its own built-in TV tuner so you can record TV shows right through here. This was only $1,260 and I still got one of these today and it still works but uh, I think that's what really helped Sony uh, get a head start on the home video revolution. Now bear in mind that back then in 1975 and 76 in that era Sony had 100% of the video market. It had the whole market to itself. If you had anything back then, you had Sony and you had a beta. Uh, in 10 years that have elapsed since then, Sony is down to about 11% of the home video market. Now what happened between 100 down to 11 is a whole story in itself, which we'll cover in our tech report on beta versus VHS or the downfall of beta, as it were. Why did the superior for format, quality-wise, slip down so far? And we'll cover that again in, a, in another tech report. Anyway, I hope it's been fun for you and me to look back at the first Sony Betamax, which is over 10 years old now. And it, it can truth, truthfully be said that this here began the whole home video revolution. Anyway, it's been fun. Hope you, you enjoyed it. I'm Ray Glasser, and this has been the Cleveland Tech Report. Bye-bye.